Time for another review and Amp Dino test. Make sure you watch the whole video because you know Big D's reviews are the best. Let's kick it. Rage on that beat going crazy. A lot of times people ask me, hey, do you work for Down for Sound? Because you sure do make a lot of videos of their amps. Well, no, I don't work for them, but man, they've always got the coolest amps, including these new Minimax series. Today, specifically the MM1004, which currently lists for $149.99 on their website. And again, I don't get paid for these reviews other than the affiliate links below. I just test the things I think you guys want to see. And mini amps are hot right now, almost as hot as hotcakes used to be before McDonald's raised the price so high nobody can afford them. <laughs> anyway, let's take a look here. You see we got a manual. It does have some specifications there. We will get to the specs a little bit later in the video. We also get a couple of Allen's keys. One of them is really small. Have to use that one for the speakers and such. Then we have these two little pigtails with RCAs on the other end. You'll see why once we show the amp why these are required. Now let's pull out the red anodized four channel mini amp from Down for Sound, the MM. 1004 and first up let's talk about the dimensions 9.6 inches for the length that's from mounting foot to mounting foot 4.8 inches for the width 2.2 inches for the height now here's a comparison to a couple other four channel amps the jp 34 ab jp 84 and also the mm 1004 you can see how small this little joker is now these next pictures are kind of up close so it's not as big as it may look in the pictures here when I show you what's going on. Here on one end of the amp, we do have the RCA inputs, again, via pigtails. I'm not the biggest fan of these, but I understand why they had to use them. Honestly, there was no way you could fit the RCA jacks if they went that route. So they gave more ability here for crossover controls using these. So we'll just go with them. Next up, we have the gain control, 0.2 to six volts. There's a variable, of course. Next up, we have the high pass crossover. 20 hertz to 800 hertz with a times 10 factor, which makes it 200 hertz to 8 kilohertz. Notice you have to depress the button to turn it off, which is kind of odd. I'm not sure why they went this route. So if you want to stay in X1, you have to push the button in. Low pass crossover, 50 hertz to 800 hertz, also with a times 10 factor. You can enable or disable the crossover by the button on the end for on or off. Here on the opposite side of the amp, we have the connections for the power and ground as well as for the speakers. And yep, you can see that's a lot of little tiny terminals. Again, we're pretty up close here. When you see the amp up close, you'll know how small this is. Four gauge for power and ground. We have remote terminal as well as a power protecting clip light. Then we have the speaker terminals. Here's one. Channel two is across. Channel three is at the bottom on the left and channel four is the bottom right. If you want to bridge the amp, it's the outside terminals. The ones on the left are positive, ones on the right are negative. As far as ratings go, 100 by four at four ohms, 150 by four at two ohms, or 300 watts times two bridged at four ohms. Now we'll power the amp up. You can see the lights come on. Protect light will go off and then you're good to go. Now we're going to fire up the SMD to more engineering amplifier dyno so we can test the power output of this amp. On the left, you'll see the power output in watts. In the middle, the ohm load. The right, the voltage of the dyno. We'll also have the remote clamp display so we can calculate efficiency of this class D amplifier. This here's my favorite part. First up, four ohms. We do have all channels loaded. We're testing two of the four here on the dyno. The other two are on resistors. Certified test at one kilohertz takes us up to 1% distortion. See if we can get that 100 by four, yes. 119 and 124 at 14.32. Now we'll switch it to the uncertified mode, which takes us up to the clipping point. And you're gonna see here very much similarity. 119 and 124. So when these amps go into clipping and it's time for them to give up, they just kind of give up. That's what we see here. Also, dynamic test, check this out. It's unbelievable, I know. It's probably the first amp I've ever seen do exactly the same power in all three different tests, but it did. As far as efficiency goes, at four ohms, four channel, 86%. Very good from what we've measured before. Two ohms, four channels, rated 150 watts by four at 14.4. Certified test is always first. Let's see what we get. And 158 by four at 14.36 volts. Now we'll do the uncertified test to clipping. I bet it's gonna be close to 158. Let's see how close it is. 
Oh, it's exactly the same, 158 again at 14.34. Now I know the dynamic can't be the same again. Let's run it here and see. Ah, no, it's a little more. Over 200 watts, about 208 watts average. Voltage is a little bit high. And we jumped up there a little bit at the end, but still the efficiency dropped some. We're down to 72% efficient at two ohms in the four channel mode. Next up, we're gonna bridge the amp, which rated 300 watts by two at 14.4 volts. Certified test first to 1% distortion. And here you go. 353 and 324 right at 14.4 volts. Uncertified to clipping. Let's see what we get. And close, 329, 353. Again, the difference you're seeing here in the power You'd never notice it. You'd never be able to hear it. And you can see how close it is here with the dynamic run. The channels are matched really well. Right at 400 watts per channel, dynamically bridged and efficiency 75% using one kilohertz track, four ohms bridged. Now here are the results. If you like numbers, you can see this, you can pause this. I'd appreciate it if you wouldn't just share a screenshot, share the video, because it takes me a long time to make these videos. And it helps me out a lot if people actually watch them and subscribe to my channel. So thanks for sending people to the video instead of just doing screenshots. But you're welcome to pause if you want to see the numbers. Next up, we're going to try this amp with some speakers. Recommend you use quality headphones or speakers so you can hear how it sounds. We'll see what it's all about. Here we have the Down for Sound Mini Max 4 channel. Have it hooked up in the 3 channel mode going to the ELAC bookshelf speakers as well as a Sundown SA 6.5 subwoofer. That way we're trying out the mids and highs and the sub side. Even though this amp doesn't really have any adjustments for sub other than just low pass, doesn't have a bass knob or anything like that, we're still gonna try it, kind of a full range application to see how it works. Let's see. We'll get an idea of the vocals here with the Ice and Fire by King Canyon. course the classic for doing sq testing smoke jacket blues and of course to test out the bass capability let's try ice flow from kevin mcleod get ready for the bass This song is just essentially a bass track. It's called Space Age Hustle. Let's see how it performs. I demoed some other songs off camera that I can't play back for you. Overall, I was really happy with the sound quality of the amp. Let's check out the thermals and internals. Here's the outside of the amp. You can see here on the bottom is the hottest part. It's a little bit under 100 degrees Fahrenheit after we were jamming for a while. And uh, so we decided to go ahead and take off the bottom plate so we can check out the thermals inside the amp. And here we go. We'll scroll across and see it got um, almost 200 degrees Fahrenheit with some of these resistors in here, but uh, nothing out of the ordinary from what I could see. Here are the internals. This is a Class D four-channel full bridge amp. Alpine, Kicker, Rockford, a lot of other companies have used full bridge designs over the years. Here we can see 35 volt 2200 microfarad for the filtering. 
Then we can see the 1000 microfarad 50 volt for the rails. Next up, let's talk about the pros and cons, the things I like, things I think could be better, at least things to be aware of. First up, small footprint, rated power plus, crossover flexibility, of course, low pass, high pass, or band pass, six color choices, two, three, or four channel operation, reasonable pricing, 150 bucks for this four channels, not too bad, great sound, I didn't have any complaints of the sound quality. For the cons or things to be aware of, I get a little picky here. The RCAs do connect via pigtails. Hope you don't lose those. It does require four channel input. I wish they had a two to four input switch. The times 10 crossover settings are kind of odd. I would think you would push the button to enable times 10, not push it to enable times one. Of course, there's no bass remote and no Bluetooth. If we're gonna ask, why not ask for the fun stuff? Overall, no real complaints of this app. I think it's pretty cool. Price is good, sounds good, fits under your seat. Hey man, go get you one. I think you'll like it. Till next time, Big D, I'm out of here. All right, we have the amp bridge. We'll try two ohms dynamic bridge. That's one ohm per channel. It's not rated for this, but we'll just try the dynamic run and see what it does. Okay. Protect. And it came out of protect, so doesn't like that load.